Welcome fathers who are looking to inspire their kids and become fearless. This is the Become a Fearless Father show and I'm your host, Klaas van Oosterhout. I'm a father of two boys, husband and entrepreneur. This show is created to teach you how to take control and enjoy the most difficult job you've ever faced, fatherhood. I'm going to keep it real and share real life experience. A heads up, there is no magic pill. You will have to put in the hours, sweat and tears to achieve victory. Are you ready to improve your health, wealth, relationships, knowledge and become the hero your family needs you to be? I know you are. So get your pen and paper ready and let's become fearless fathers together. All right, and we are live and I have the pleasure to present Julian Hayes II. Awesome you're online with me. And uh, we know each other a little bit already through our mentor, Niti Sobo, and meeting up every single week. Um, I'm so happy that you said yes. I'm really excited to share your message and learn. Well, me personally, I want to learn a lot from you and also share with, with all the fathers out there. So let's start off, Julian. Can you um, share a little bit about yourself and what has been your um, journey so far towards the point where you're at now? Yeah, sure. And um, first of all, thank you for actually inviting me on this show. I'm uh, I'm excited to share with the fathers today all the information I know and just to help them be a little more fearless and a little more healthier so they can be around with their family more. So a little about me, it's going to start probably around my teenager years. And I was playing basketball and there's an older gentleman that comes in. And he's, he's, I think he's around 50, 50, 55 or something. And he's running toe to toe with me. He's leaving a lot of other kids behind. And we got to talking at the end. And this is the first time I've seen someone that's, that's like in this good of shape at this age, because to me, and for what I've heard in my background, it's like, oh, when you get older, you know, that's when you just get sick and you gain weight and et cetera, and et cetera. So this is really different to me. And so we start talking and the guy was like, yeah, age is nothing but a number. And, you know, your body's a temple. And, you know, that little seed right there stuck with me as I went on to university. And that's when I really got into health and spent a lot of my weekends studying, learning. And I eventually moved, go to New York for grad school, take a year of medical school. That's where my life changes. I meet a lot of interesting people up there from all parts of the world. Mm -hmm. And so I come home that summer night and I decide not to go back to school. And the, the funny thing is I told everyone I want to be a writer. I want to be a coach and I want to, I want to have a legacy and, and, you know, make a bigger impact in, in my own way. And the funny thing is people thought I was on drugs or something because no one ever knew that a, I like to write, and B, I had these desires to, to be something bigger in me. I kept them secret for like 25 years. And so it was a big shock to people. And so up until that point, and then now I've just continually to now, I write for different magazines. Some of those are like Inc. Magazine and Entrepreneur. And then I also work with like um, impact driven entrepreneurs to help them automate their health and create a predictable energy system. So they too can live their highest form of life and make their biggest impact. Nice. That's awesome. So just a question that I have in between from your story. How did you handle the fact that you have been, let's say, bottled up, keeping bottled up that, that desire to write and, and make a legacy and have an impact on the world? And then all of a sudden share it and get that response. How, how did you cope with that? Because that must have been, well, I can only imagine that must have been a, a big blow. Yeah. Well, at first, um, I thought everyone was going to be excited. And I did not get that. <laughs> so honestly, at first, it was, it was a little damaging to my ego. And I'm not going to lie. I started to question myself because I didn't. I, I, did, I really didn't have any like writing skill. I didn't go to school for writing or anything. And so I did think about like, man, maybe I should go back. But you know, I didn't want to be 50 years old or 60 years old and be that old guy that talks to kids about what I wish I'd done when I was your age. So I didn't want to be that person. And secondly, that's when I, I knew I had the power of books. And so 
I essentially formed a new family and just started reading a lot of different books about people from different circumstances. And I just relied on that. And then just a belief in myself to put in the work. Nice. Nice. Thanks for sharing that. That's awesome. And yeah, it's so important to, to continue to believe in yourself, but I can only imagine how, how much of an impact that must, must have had in the beginning. So, um, well, I'm, I'm very excited and happy that you continued and let's go a little bit more in depth of, you know, what it is that you do and how mm-hmm. we can help fearless fathers. And I, I actually want to dive straight, straight in and explain to you, like my biggest struggle as soon as I became a father is just the most important thing is your energy. Mm-hmm. You must have energy all day long. Um, you know, for me, my day starts and, and I wake up early and I do my whole routine and then um you know i i wake up my kids i do routines with them uh, i bring them to school and then of course it's time to start working on 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 become a fearless father um after that i gotta pick them up again so i pick them up at one o'clock already in the afternoon and since that time i'm with them and dude even a two-year-old he doesn't stop like like (laughs) they they, they like you know they, they take a nap or something my kids don't take a nap and i don't believe it i don't think any kid takes a nap and they don't have like you know how we have, like, maybe we can compare each other with a car? So you have, like, second gear and third gear. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. They just got the fifth or maybe even the sixth gear, and that's it. They just keep going like that. And you got to keep up. If you want to be really fearless and, and you know, I want to be with I want to go in the play, playground and play with them. I want to be what you said, like, later when I'm 50, 55. I want to be that guy that uh-huh. still outruns my kids. You know what I mean? But it's tough at the moment starting out. So I'm just wondering, like, you know, what is your system – that can make fathers reach this kind of this this type of goal to to continue as you said like the guy that inspired you because that's what i want i want to inspire my kids but also want to inspire other fathers and even other kids if they see me just like you mentioned that old man well old i don't call 55 old but let's let's say old for for argument's sake yeah really just you know keep going yeah well you know when we think of energy, I, I think we get it short-sighted. We always just think of something like looking for some type of food to eat. And that is a big part of it. You know, your, your nutrition is a big part of it, but it's much bigger than that. And so when I look at energy, I think of seven pillars of energy. I think of our mission, which is number one. So you can think of your mission like being your purpose. You know, why are you doing this? What gets you out of bed? What are you doing all this for? You know, number two, I think about your mindset because when you think about your mindset, you know, your psychology affects your physiology. And, you know, moving on to that, of course, is the physiology. That's the third pillar of energy. And when you think about that, that's where you think about your sleep, your nutrition, your stress, and your exercising and uh, various supplements if you need to use that. But then as we move further down the chain, we have something called your presentation. And so that's like your posture. How are you showing up to the world? You know, what, what, what are you exuding? And then performance, which performance is different for a lot of us. For someone like you, you're not only performing in business, you have to perform as a father you have to perform as a husband so we have various roles in life that we have to perform at so we need to think about those things and then number six is our relationships and our relationships can either drain us and constrict us or they can help us to they can lead us to exponential growth and expansion and then my last one is environment and environment is not just about the people you surround yourself with, but it's also little things like what's the spacing in your office space? You know, is that, is that exciting you or is that draining you or is it a clutter? Because, you know, a cluttered space leads to a cluttered mind. And, you know, and it's also your environment can also affect your sleep. And so all these seven things are connected in one way or another, but they also must be individually addressed when you're looking at the whole picture of energy. Nice. Yeah, I <laughs> he just opened my my mindset as in okay, I was doing things individually, mm-hmm. but mostly focused on the physio phys, you call it physiology part, right? Yeah. So mm-hmm. eating, eating, working out and those kind of things. Mm-hmm. That is just well let, let's let's dive deeper into this step by step uh, as far as we can get within the hour. 
Okay. This is awesome. Hey, sorry for the interruption. I know you're really enjoying the show. Just want to make sure if you're liking this information, please subscribe and um, press the like button. And also go visit becomeafearlessfather.com. You get the opportunity to share your biggest challenge at the moment as a father. And it gives me the opportunity to try and help you overcome this. Thanks and enjoy the rest of the show. You mentioned mission. So is, is mission just something that is one thing or can you have multiple missions? Like for example, you know, one of my missions is to, to, to you know, be an inspiring um, and, and perfect example for my, for my kids and make sure that they grow up when they're 18, you know. Um, but then on another mission, of course, it's within Fearless Father to reach those, reach a million fathers and, and make them, you know, on the road become fearless as well. Um, it, is it just one mission or how does that, how does that? How no, do you, I, you can definitely separate them. You definitely okay. can separate them because, um, you know, life and business and health, they all bleed into each other, but they still need to be separated, but they all can flow with each other. And mm. so I, I have a mission for my business, you know, for, for that area. And, you know, it's it influence 1 million people. Now I'm thinking about raising that because we're going to live a long time. So I might even go crazier with the number, but so I have that professional mission, but then I also have my life mission and I have my health mission. And when you think about mission, that's casting that vision, that ideal life that you see yourself. And so that's one of the first things you have to do when, when you're going on the road of trying to improve your health or grow your business or, create an even richer relationship is to craft that out and to think, what do you want to be true? Because before you can create anything externally, you have to create it inside your mind first. And, and you have to be that and exude that before you can manifest it out. Nice. Nice. I like that. Yeah. Especially manifest that out. That's, that's the key, right? Um, Absolutely, man. Nice. So you mentioned just something real quick and I want to just, for a second, go into that. You're saying that, okay, I've, I focus on a million. However, I'm going to expand that because we're going to be living longer. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think, and I'm not sure, I've never do, go into it, but I always had the feeling until you opened my mind one day, like, okay, I'm going to be around 80 and, you know, looking at my family, looking at other people around me, like 80 is going to be something that that's going to be it. And then you mentioned a number to me that I was like, okay, <laughs> let's let's talk about that more so so when you say live longer i think most people think like okay it's going to be 80 and that's it what what mm -hmm. what is your view on this and and what are you striving for i'm personally striving for 150 and okay. that might sound outrageous but you know the i think maybe a month or two ago there was a lady that was 117 or 18 and she okay. recently died and that was the oldest person in the world. And this is 2018 and she made it to 118. And so she was born a long time ago before mm -hmm. we had all this advancement, before we had all this information and we have that information now, you know, so that's automatically going to add some years because we can learn from mistakes of the past. We can learn from history. You know, the average life expectancy now is I think maybe around 80. So, and then I think around about a year 2030, they're going to be able to add a year for our life for every year afterwards, something like that. And I forgot the research study that I saw this from. So, and then I just have faith in myself to get lucky and have a few extra years. So that's how, I, like, if she did it 118, I know I can do that. And then relying on science and good behaviors and, and things I've learned from blue zones, I'm going to get to that, those extra 30 years. So that's my philosophy with that. <laughs> nice. That sounds awesome. Now I'll sign up for 100. Yeah. Uh, and, and so here's the thing, though. Awesome. You know, we can stay around a long time. You know, so there's a lot of people who unfortunately have diseases and different chronic illnesses, and they're still around at 80 years old. So mm. it's not just about living to be, it's not just about living longer, but it's also about living longer with a high quality of life to go along with that. Exactly. Yeah. You make a very good point there. I mean, you don't want to be, for example, be 80 and live another 10 years and just be a, a plan somewhere in a room yeah. mm -hmm. just 
wandering away with, with nothing to give and just sitting there and maybe have somebody visit you. No, I'm, I'm assuming that you're saying I want to be 150, but you want to be doing this, making a huge impact and teaching people uh, about the art of fitness and, and, and life. Yeah, seeing life. seeing tons of generations of, of people. Yeah, awesome. Yes, and seeing all the cool things that are going to happen in the future. I'm super optimistic about things that are going to happen in the future. Nice, loving it. Let's see how far I can join you on that journey. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so I, I must be honest. I'm not proud of this, but the other day I was laughing a little bit. And <laughs> um, the reason was that... Um, yeah, I've joined a lot of father groups on Facebook and I was reading some of the messages and, you know, it basically came down to like one of the fathers was pointing out like, or was annoying, annoyingly pointing out that I'm getting tired of everybody sharing uh, their videos or their messages in regards to working out. Like there's mm -hmm. some guys, you know, they're working out and they, they, they're doing really well and then they share that. And he was getting annoyed and he was venting that so i was laughing a little bit but then i started thinking like okay so okay that's what he posted you know that's cool but how is that possible i mean after all we all know basically what it means to 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 live healthy right so mm -hmm. what is it then that 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 holds us back what is it then that it makes it so difficult for people to actually live healthier. Yeah, I it's a multifaceted issue. It's not just one thing, you know. I think the world wants to tell you it's just it's just food or it's just not exercising enough. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's not it. There's something deeper there, you know. Um there's a reason why people might eat a bunch of sweets. You know, my theory the reason why a lot of people reach for sweets or are drawn to those sweets is because they might not have enough pleasure in life. And those sweets represent a hit of dopamine, um, a hit of pleasure, a sweetness in their life that they don't have right now. So maybe, maybe their job, their work is terrible right now. And maybe their relationships are not good right now or it's stressful. And they just need something to escape for a temporary moment. And that's what those sweets represent. Unfortunately, that's not getting them to the root cause of the issue, you know, and so that's what we do a lot in this world is we don't do a lot of the deep work to really investigate our core problems. And so we we stay shallow and we reach for a quick solution and we don't have the long term in mind, you know. So unfortunately, like when I think of a lot of times with my family and I notice some of their behaviors, you know they're making decisions based on the present moment right now. They're not considering next month, six months from now, what are the consequences of this? So, you know, one of the things that people can easily do right now to fix that is, um, I think I heard it from Ray Dalio and it's to think about the consequences and, and think about like three to five consequences of it. So an easy example for someone who hates exercising is the first consequence of exercising there's going to be some pain involved. You might be a little sore. But if you go down the list and you think about the third, the fifth consequence, you're going to have a better heart, some better lungs, some more energy, better mood. But you have to think about all those consequences down the road and not just get so caught up in the present moment. I So if I understand you correctly, because I'm guilty of this, right? I'm not going to... Mm -hmm. Lay hold. I'm, I'm I'm doing a lot better um, with with working out and eating healthy. But especially what you're saying, just that craving. I, I must say, yeah, I still have that. Like during a week, it might happen several times. Oh, I do week. too. And yeah, yeah, I I still have it too. <laughs> exactly. But what you're saying is that that's actually a sign that you should say, okay, stop. I'm not going to open that fridge right now. I'm first going to think like, what is triggering me right now to say. God, I need like freaking chocolate or I need like a, a big bowl of ice cream. Yeah, because I, I know from personal for me personally and then from a few from a few clients that oftentimes the reason why we might go mindlessly snack on something or reach for something that we know is not good for us mm -hmm. is just because we're stressed and we're trying to escape the moment right now that's causing that discomfort. 
Nice. I'm going to put that on my fridge. <laughs> I'm going to put a message on my fridge saying, are you sure that you, you know, have you analyzed why you want to grab something right now? Just to yeah, I, the mind, right? Yeah, I don't think we have food problems as much. I think it's more life problems. Like we don't have business problems. We have life problems. Mm -hmm. And they just mask themselves up in these other entities. But it's really just life problems that we're not settling the conflict inside or outside if it's with other people. Exactly, exactly. So to continue that a little bit, like let's say, for example, for the last 35 years um, or someone that, that's now 35 and, and you know they've lived unhealthy mm -hmm. in general in all single areas of, of life and they all of a sudden say, okay, it's time to change. Like... And for me, the big change was, okay, yeah, now I got, um, I got a son. So, you know, I, I got to step up my game. And, and I think I, I see that that's for, for a lot of fathers out there, it's a trigger. Um, what would be like their first steps to guarantee that they, because you see a lot of people, they try to try to feel and then they fall back into the old rhythm and that's it. Now, what would guarantee a, a long-lasting, successful change? Yeah. So when it comes to, if you're just looking at exercise by itself, then simply walking is an easy start. Just simply walking, because that's going to give you energy in itself right there. You know, walking five times a week for 35 minutes or three times a week for 60 minutes is more than enough to get started, you know, or you can use some of that time to go play with your kid and get outside, especially when the sun's out because the sun is valuable, really valuable in terms from, for a myriad of reasons. Now, if you're looking at the big picture of things, what can get someone is to actually pretty much treat their, treat their health, treat their body like a business and start scheduling and creating routines for different areas of their health, just like they do with their business. So, you know, we're always going to schedule calls. You know, if we have sales calls, we're definitely going to have that on the calendar. We're definitely going to have meetings with any of that. We're definitely going to have like doctor's appointments. So we're not going to forget those things. So we kind of have to create that urgency with our health and put that on the calendar as well. Exactly. So integrate that in your life and make sure that every time you plan something, you make sure that you you plan your uh, steps towards becoming more healthy in there as well. Yeah, because the, the issue becomes a lot of times people fall off with their fitness. And you see this a lot of times with people at the beginning of the year is that they go from it from a backward standpoint is that they're going really intense with their exercise, but they're not thinking about how does this affect my business in life? So they're trying to make life and business fit around their fitness when it needs to be the other way around, you know, schedule out your life, schedule out your stuff with your family, schedule out the business stuff, you know, have those in your calendar and then work in the exercise habits um, into that schedule that's already there. And then you're going to create um, a synergy, synergy with each other instead of all this conflict with each other. I hear you. Yeah. The, the trap that I was getting into several years ago was that thinking that, Okay, I'm going to start again, and I can do the same as when I was 20. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then, you know, just go again, full out, and then you're so sore for like a week. That it's like, <laughs> I'm not sure if this is worth it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, that's why you want to gradually just build up the, the intensity. But, you know, as people who are like go-getters, you know, it's, that's hard to do because I'm kind of that way too. Like mm -hmm. I don't like just slowly ramping up things. I like to start, I like to go from zero to 60 when it comes to that. Uh, and that gets me in trouble sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know where that comes from. <laughs> I got the same issue. Great. So you know, the, the other thing is that um, when I started, I started looking at a lot of information on the internet, right? Mm -hmm. About living healthy. It just seems that a lot of the things you can find is a, you know, one size fit all. Like this is the solution for you to become healthy and it's for everybody it's the same. So I'm just wondering, you know, because I don't think we're all the same. 
You know what I mean? Like my body is completely different from yours. Besides that, what you just mentioned, things like my mission and my mindset are just completely different from yours as well. So, you know, how does that how does that work? So, what is your take on 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 making something for for everybody, or should somebody be focused on? Okay, I need somebody that mentors me, and like, what can work for me? How do you do that with your with your clients? Yeah, so you you hit the spot on the nail that we're we're not at the same. You know, we there's people with different body types, different internal makeups, and that needs to be accounted for. So that's like my approach is all like it's a holistic approach, and there's bio individuality, and that fancy word simply means that you know you got to take into account genetics, you got to take into account their lifestyle, you got to take into account their particular stress levels, their body type, and so that's one of the things that we do in like my practice is we look, we take all those factors into account before um, just throwing them a, a workout, you know? So a simple example is um, someone who is like super stressed out all the time and they might be very slender in their body type. They're most likely going to be what you call a very sympathetic driven body. And all that means is like, they have the hormone cortisol that ramps up and so they can burn out really quick. And so they already have a high stress threshold. So what I would do with them is I would not have them immediately start off with like super intense CrossFit workouts mm -hmm. because exercising in itself is a stressor also. And so all you're doing is accumulating more stress to their body and lifestyle that they might not be able to handle right now. Whereas if I have someone like me, so I'm kind of a hybrid. So mm -hmm. I can actually handle more volume, more intense workouts just due to my genetic makeup and body okay. type. So, um, so that's, that's like a key thing right there. And then like someone who's maybe, um, a little, I'm trying to think of a nice word to say it, like someone who's a little thicker, you know, a little, um, thicker bones, thicker, thicker bone structure. Okay. They're going to be good to have some kind of daily activity because they're going to, they have a slow, they have a slower metabolism, you know, so they need to have that, con that daily movement, that 30 minutes of some kind of movement. It doesn't always have to be working out. It can just be like a walking or, or cycling or something. They need that movement more. Whereas someone like me, like I said, I'm a hybrid and so I'm a little thinner joint. I don't mm -hmm. necessarily need that much because my body can't handle that much intensity and load. Wow, that's insightful. I've I've never known that. <laughs> and that's why I was mentioning, like you know, I just well now I'm working a little bit with with some 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 people and yeah, but still it's it's nowhere near on that inside level to adapt. Like I like I said, what I'm doing right now is like I'm doing a TRX workout twice mm -hmm. a week, but it's a one size fit all. It's it's, I mean it's it's yeah, it's a one size fit all. It's yeah. it's one program and that's just being sold to everybody with all the respect i love the program by the way it's awesome yeah, that's no it's it's, 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 yeah, it's really good it's you know i, I like those things uh, i like those type of workouts but you know it's um yeah i don't know I, I just over the years and i just learned that you know what goes on in our life really needs to also take into account when it comes to our exercise programming and even uh, with our nutrition and sleep so, um, because if you exercise really intensely and you exercise a lot, you mm -hmm. also, you know, you, you, that means you need to do more regeneration and recovery okay. and rest more. So that's why you have to think about that. So like for me, for the rest of this quarter, um, it's a very intense business period of getting a lot of stuff done. So I've dialed back a little bit of my, my, uh, workout regimen because, mm -hmm. um, I need some sleep. I need a lot of sleep. If I'm working out really intensely, I need like nine hours. And unfortunately, okay. unfortunately, I cannot sleep. Unfortunately, I'm not a short sleeper, unfortunately. So yeah. I've come to learn that if I'm really going to train intense like that, I need like nine hours. Wow. So I'm, I'm glad you bring it up, Julian, because I have to be honest and admit to you, man, I sleep like a baby. <laughs> oh, yeah, I do, too, because I'm tired. <laughs> exactly, but I yeah. but I had that my whole life. Like mm -hmm. literally, my father, when I was a child, had to run into the room and grab me, 
and pull me away because somebody lit a truck on fire. And I don't know if you've ever seen a huge truck. Well, you've seen a huge truck because they're in America. But the, the trucks in, in the Netherlands, they have huge fuel tanks like right there. And they somebody lit it on fire. And if that ignites, it's going to take out a couple of blocks. Dude, I didn't wake up. My dad was up like that. And that's continued throughout my whole life. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's so bad that if my kids are crying, it, I'm getting better at it because I'm, I, for some reason, now I hate sounds. But there's most mornings I wake up at four and I roll over and there's all of a sudden, instead of just my wife, there's two extra kids playing there. And I'm like, when did that happen? You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I, I, but then I thought that's normal. You know, people just sleep well. I'm now... Over time that I'm researching a little bit more, I'm actually finding out that a lot of people are having trouble sleeping or mm-hmm. and nobody's talking about it. It's not like it's just what I've always learned is you sleep eight hours. Yeah. And that's the general consensus. So I'm just wondering from you, because you just mentioned it, like if I would work that hard, I need I need nine hours of sleep. So what what is the truth about sleeping and, and what must people know and should do to guarantee that sleep is is going well yeah um you know saying that you you must have eight hours that's not that's a myth so you not everyone needs eight hours um some people can go on less and some people some people need more so that's a thing that's once again is to your body type to your individual makeup and everything now we do know that there are you can't just go on five hours of sleep every night. We do know that. You can't just go on four hours. There's maybe, I think, I think there's actually two, maybe two to three percent of the world that can actually fully function blood markers and everything on like four hours of sleep. And that's because they have a specific gene in their body that allows them to do that. Lucky you know? them. Yeah. <laughs> lucky, lucky them. Exactly. I don't really like to sleep. I just know I need it. To, to, to do all this other stuff. So um, so with that said, when I think about sleep, I don't necessarily think about just getting eight hours. I look at it in terms of cycles. And so what I mean by cycles is the average sleep cycle for a person from stage one to stage five of their sleep cycle is going to be 90 minutes. And so the average person needs seven and a half hours of sleep a night. So that's, let's see, 90, three hours. So that's five sleep cycles. So that's yeah, five sleep cycles a night. So you can look at it that way. So throughout the week, that's going to be 35 total sleep cycles. Now, here's the now here's the way I look at this. Some nights, life happens or you want to do stuff with your family and that throws off your bedtime. Well, you can just make that up later in the week. You can maybe take a 90 minute nap during the day or you can take you can schedule in three 30 minute naps and you still make up that time. So that's kind of the way I look at that is just that because, you know, as an entrepreneur myself, um, you can't just, you you get to working and (laughs) you know, you can't just sleep all the time because you got, you got work to do. So, you know, so that's why for me, I know my magic number is seven. So I don't, I try not to go below seven. Seven's my magic number. There are some who can get by on six, but over time that does affect you, you know, from a um, body standpoint, if you're trying to lose, if you're trying to lose body fat in ex- and your performance, that does affect you. And so that's, if you're sleeping that small of amount, then you definitely don't want your training to be balls to the wall, crazy intense every day because you're just going to wear your body down. I hear you. Great. Thanks for sharing that. Um, I was wondering, because you mentioned real quick, like, you know, you can take a 90-minute nap or you can take a nap. Um, during our calls with me, you mentioned that, you know, um, you, you like Portugal, you've been to Portugal, and I'm just assuming that Portugal is exactly the same as, as Spain and Italy. Uh, they're famous for their siestas. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's, what's your take on that? Um, like, should that be something regular or is that pure something that uh, like lately I've been doing like before I'm from the Netherlands, we don't do siesta. It's, it's, it's too cold there to <laughs> think about siesta. <laughs> but now lately I'm, I'm, I'm actually like taking 20, 30 minute naps. 
just to to get back that energy. I'm just wondering what you what your your take on on that. I think if you want to take a nap, I'm all for it. I think that's up to the individual. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's totally up to the individual. I will say though, if you're going to schedule your naps, either do it at 30 minutes or do it for 90 minutes. Okay. And the reason why is because that time between 30 and 90 minutes, certain there are certain stages of sleep mm -hmm. that, okay, let's do it like this. You ever wake up sometimes in the morning and you just feel super groggy, even though you got a lot of sleep? Oh, yeah. yeah. That and that's because you probably woke up in the middle of your, of your sleep stage, of, of your sleep cycle. You, you woke right. up in that middle stage. So you're still in your deep sleep stage. And so that's why you woke up and you feel a little groggy. So with that 30 minutes, you're still getting rest, but you're not going into that deep sleep. So you're not going to feel lethargic and groggy when you wake up. And then if you go through the 90 minutes, you get that full cycle. So you're essentially back at the beginning. And so that's a light sleep. And so you're going to be fine when you wake up and not feel super lethargic or sluggish. So that's why we, we, I always recommend 30 to 90 minutes, 30 or 90 minutes. If you're going to do your sleep. Nice. That's good to know. Yeah. So if you do 60, cause that, that's how sometimes happens, you know, I don't hit the alarm and then after an hour I wake up and yet I have no idea where I'm at that moment. It's like, you feel so heavy and, and groggy yeah. and dizzy. Mm -hmm. And, and right. you know, most of us get, you feel that little dip probably around one o'clock or thirteen hundred. You you feel around thirteen to fourteen hundred. You feel that little dip always, and that's normal because that's our circadian rhythm. You know our internal clock, yeah. and we we have that dip at night when it's time to go to sleep, and we have a small dip in the early afternoon, and so that's always going to be there. So that's why you usually feel those things around that time. A lot of people call it the mid the mid afternoon slump or whatever. Exactly, I I always thought that that had to do with what you eat for lunch. Like if you have a heavy lunch, that yeah. that's then it's both. Yeah. No, so you can actually double up on that. Yeah, that's a it's a little bit. You know, if if you eat a super if you eat a super heavy lunch, of course you're going to feel a little tired after that. But it's also you know that little dip is also just due to our circadian rhythm. Exactly. Exactly. Cool. Um. You know, for me, um, I, I love talking about this more, but I also want to talk a little bit, as you know, for me, a fearless father must be an entrepreneur mm -hmm. and he must be able to teach this to his kids, right? So I want to spend a little bit of a couple of questions on, on being an entrepreneur, if, if that's okay with you. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people don't make the step into entrepreneur for whatever reason. However, the ones that do start, you know, um, I'm just wondering from your perspective or, or from your experience, what have been some of the biggest lessons you have learned um, that you wished you'd known um, when you started out? Oh, man. Probably the first one is that I need to ask questions, ask more questions, ask more questions and get help. For, I think, like two years. I did not, I was embarrassed to ask like questions or to seek out help because like my ego was so much in a way, or I had this story in my head that if you go ask questions for help and stuff, you know, that, that means you're just, you know, you're not good enough or like maybe you just don't have it because you should know this stuff. You should know how to do this already. Yeah. And so that's my first, that's my biggest one is to seek out help much sooner and to get coaches to get mentors for different areas and phases of your life. I hear you, yeah. Talking about the mentor, that, that's one of the things that I figured out um, way too late. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, you're trying to figure it out, figure it out. And it's a lot of trial and error, which is good. I mean, that's the way we learn. But it could have been done so much faster as, as you know, if you, if you find that, that person. Um, so as, as a mentor, because was, what do you call yourself? Do you call yourself a mentor or, or a life coach or what, what is the title that you, you use at the moment? Yeah, it's, um, for people to understand, I, I usually just go by an executive health coach. Okay, cool. Yeah. And what is it then that, um, because you know, for me, that's like, I, I still don't have any idea if I'll be a mentor or a life coach or, uh, <laughs> 
and it's the fearless father helping out other fearless fathers. However, we're, we're teaching something, right? We're sharing our knowledge and, and mm -hmm. our philosophy. How did you go about found, finding your philosophy and your way of, okay, this is the way that I want to work and this is what I want to present as an mm -hmm. entrepreneur making my impact on, on my clients? Yeah, so like that, like the, that, that whole seven pillars of energy and everything, it's um, one, it's personal experience in myself. So I took a lot of personal um, data on myself. It's observation from the world around me. So looking at family, looking at friends, listening to what they're struggling with, you know, looking at the people in the gym who I hear and see that they're working really hard, but they're not making any progress. And it's reading a lot of books. I read a lot of books and, you know, I read, I study for hours every day. And then I also, um, luckily, I've had, uh, and my my academic background has really helped because I I've gotten to see kind of like the medical world and kind of where they're lacking, a lot of things mm -hmm. that are lacking in that. And so I just had all these influences, and then I just put them all together and sat down and really thought about it. And so I think that's the best thing that people can do is take take their experience. And and then just go out and read on all kinds of subjects. And I've read stuff from people that I don't agree with, but they still have valuable stuff. And I want to see their point of view to take into account. And so, um, and if you notice, a lot of times in books, the book you read, they'll mention other books or other authors. And so that's what I did. So like, like I found a lot of my health mentors along the way, and mm -hmm. even new ones that I have now, just from books. I read their books and then I either reach out to them or I just read everything that they have ever written. Nice, nice. Talking about books real quick and continuing on that, what kind of books, like let's say three books you would really recommend um, for fathers who are trying to look more towards that healthy lifestyle? Oh, man. Oof. <laughs> hmm. I can't think of that off the top of my head. I might have to have you put those in the links. That's fine. That's no problem. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, might have to, I might actually have to do that because um, I think a lot of times I'm thinking of a lot of mindset books. I'm thinking of things like the 50th law. Mm -hmm. Great I'm, thinking book. Of, I'm thinking of things like the science of getting rich. And the reason why I would urge someone to do mindset work first is because if this person is looking to get started, they inherently know what to do. They know that maybe they need to exercise more. They know that maybe they need to cut back on the sweets or cut back on the fried foods. And oftentimes reading books, there's so many directions or it's, it's follow this, follow this way to do this. And for someone new, you don't really want them to be pigeonholed into something that they feel constricted about. You want them to just do very basic things and really get their psychology around changing their life and changing their, their health. Mm -hmm. But I will find, I will uh, share a few health books though. That, that's awesome. And mine said, well, yeah, I, I've, I love 50, 50. Oh, I know, I know one. I know one. It's a uh, sleep. It's uh, how we sleep by um, Dr. Matthew Walker. All right. Yeah, Great. you'll really res you'll really respect sleep after you read that book. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Well, um, thank you for sharing that. That's always important. Yeah, I, I've been recently just actually my parents read a lot. Like they have a freaking library, mm -hmm. and I might have owned until that's not my. Let's say one year ago, I maybe owned like four or five books. Like I'm talking about like books, not <laughs> not my martial arts kind of explanation, but yeah. like real books with, with, with high value and, and 50 Floor is actually the book that I've now in a short period of time read twice and listened to twice as well. And yeah. it's such an insight in regards to, to the mindset and especially what you mentioned is like the way we live. And I especially enjoyed the last part where he's talking about death. Um, and and a sense of urgency that that just made a huge impact on me as a father, uh, a husband, and and an entrepreneur. 
Yeah. So, and I, you know, I think about that stuff because I'm currently not a father, but in the future, there's a high likelihood that I will. And mm -hmm. so I, I think about taking care of myself now because I want to pass on the healthiest set of genes that I can because there's a thing called epigenetics mm -hmm. that, um, you know, what you, you're going to pass on to your kids, kind of how your current physiology is right now. And so I don't want to set up the kid already with a few check marks against him that makes his life harder growing up or it makes him predisposed to certain issues. So I really want to put him in the best conditions as he's coming into the world. I didn't know that either. <laughs> That's good yeah. to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, luckily, you know, I, I told I told my mom that she did a pretty good job for for what she knew. You know, I, I looked, you know, she told me about her diet and everything. And so um there's there's not too many things that um she passed on. She's a little high strung. So that's kind of like why I had to really learn how to handle stress and et cetera, because, you know, she was that kind of person. So, you know, but um, those those kind of little things matter. You know, that's when you that's what we talked about earlier is really looking at the big picture mm. and expanding outside of this present moment and think about, you know, you know, you're not just eating for yourself. You're not just taking care of your body for yourself. You know, and you fathers out there, you can tell your wife that she's not just eating this food for her health. She's eating it for her kids, her future kids, and and the extension of a healthy set of a uh, family down the line. Yeah, that's a dangerous subject, my friend. I can tell you that. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've I've had a lot of women clients, um, so um, I'm well aware of language and how important it, it is so <laughs> yeah i've stepped into that trap several times and decided you know what i'm just going to show how it works out if you start looking more healthier and yep. that has worked out way better because mm -hmm. my wife sees me now with a little by lit, little showing six pack and getting mm -hmm. a little bit muscle and I look better than than when we when we started dating. So we're talking about at least I think about ten years, no less than ten years ago. Doesn't really matter. Yeah, and, and you know, she's going to see that you're also going to show up differently because you're feeling good about yourself, and that's part of that presentation pillar of energy that's important. Is that you're showing up better. You're showing up more confident. You know, you're embracing your quote unquote masculine energy more, which your kids are going to feel that. And she's going to feel that she's going to be, she's, you know, by you showing up when you're masculine, she's going to feel better and just naturally able to show up in her feminine. And that this leads to a more harmonious relationship. I hear you. Well, so far the cool thing is that it has made her start doing a daily workout and has made mm -hmm. her start thinking more conscious about what she's eating and what she's drinking. So um, I found that for me, at least, that worked better than telling her, like, hey, look, you see me eat more healthy. You should set a better <laughs> example for our kids. So yeah, you need to change, man. That backfired <laughs> hard. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that was not a good idea. But, hey, we learned by trial and error and failing and keeping the Exactly. Vision, right? <laughs> exactly. Great. Hey, um, I'm, I'm really appreciating this. We're, we're getting close to the end. And um, – we had the pleasure to talk a little bit before this call and I was mm -hmm. really excited. So I want to have the time to share this with, with people that are watching this now and people that are watching this later on the recording is that um, you actually made the possibility or made available um, for the fathers out there to schedule a, a free consultation call. Yeah. Is it? Is yeah. yeah you can, How do you call? You can, can you explain yeah. a little bit about what that is and um, how they can benefit from that and how they can schedule that with you. Yeah, it's a um, high performance health strategy session. And basically what that is, you know, um, you know, after they fill out a little form with a little initial information, and then we're using that 45 to 60 minutes to take a deep dive into their, into their, um, their lifestyle and to get to the root causes of some of the things that are preventing them from operating with a predictable system of energy and health. Because a lot of times, you know, people have good days with energy where they're feeling great, but then they have those days where they're not feeling so great with their energy. And, you know, when we're trying to be high performers and fearless fathers, 
you know, we cannot operate. We can't have inconsistency. You know, it's we need to show up every day in our highest state and we can't afford to do random things. And and so, yeah, so that's what that call is about. You know, it's um, we're going over those seven things, those seven pillars of energy that I mentioned, and um, they'll leave regardless of whether they want to continue or not with me. They'll leave with a lot more clarity than they came in with as far as what the next steps need to be. Nice. That sounds great. Yeah, probably even more insight than we're getting right now from this call. Um, highly recommendable um, to, to do this. Um, I've known Julian for quite some time now uh, during our calls, and the guy is a professional. And his, how do you say that? Your your compassion towards wanting to help people is is huge, and I've always appreciated uh, your input. Uh, um, since we have a couple of minutes, I actually want to take advantage of that because, um, you know, you can prepare all you want, but then during the, the talk, you get more ideas of what I want to talk about. <laughs> you mentioned your last point, talking about, like we, we've almost mentioned every single point except for the last one you talked about, you know, environment so important. Mm -hmm. well, I, I know that environment, as in your business environment, like your office is important, the way it looks and gives you energy and stuff like that. Um, I've, I've read a little bit about, um, and I, I can't come up with the names, but, but the Chinese philosophies in regards to energy, um, mm -hmm. how you set things up, where the light comes from, all those kind of things. Does that also, like, is that kind of, is that also the kind of energy that you're, that you're talking about? Yeah, that type of energy certainly matters, you know, you know, and um, I definitely take into account all of that. Um, I've, I've, I've studied a little bit of that area of also of um, health and medicine as well, you know. And so, but for those out there who maybe that sounds overwhelming or a little mm -hmm. woo wooey, let's get practical. Environment. Environment affects your sleep big time, specifically light. So for those of you who live in neighborhoods and you have light coming in through your blinds at night, that's going to affect your sleep. For those of you who have, I don't know, some people still sleep with a TV on. So for those that sleep with a TV on, that's affecting your sleep. For those that have a phone right beside you, that's affecting your sleep. And so it's those little things right there that are going to reduce your sleep quality in itself. It's those things right there that are going to cause more anxiety, cause more difficulty to turn off at night, to even fall asleep. It's those things at night that are, especially with the TVs and the laptops and the electronics in your room, it's those things that are going to cause the inability to connect with your wife more. And then one night's okay, you think about it. But then over time, those little habits build up. Mm -hmm. And now your connection, your relationship is not as strong. So you really want to guard. That's what it means by guarding your environment. Because when you don't take care of that environment, that bleeds over into affecting your relationships, which bleeds over into affecting your physio physiology and health. You know, simple things to do when it comes to protecting your environment is, I don't like to have any TVs in the bedroom, if at all possible. I would leave the TV. I would leave that out. Um, because then you just, you just really want your bedroom to be for connecting with your wife and to sleep, and that's it. I would also invest in some kind of blackout curtains if you have light coming through. And if at all possible, don't have your phone in the room. But if you need it in the room, place it far away from you. If that's what, and then place it on airplane mode. If that's what you're using for your alarm. Because when the phone is on and you have the Wi-Fi signals and et cetera, that is still giving off energy. And that's affecting your body as well. And so those are the like invisible factors that affect our health, affect our energy and et cetera, and et cetera. Cool. I'm so glad I asked that question. Thanks for that. Now I've heard a little bit about it, the, the phone and I actually turn on, I, I put it in airplane mode. Mm -hmm. Do you still recommend to not place the phone inside your bedroom and, and buy like an actual battery run clock uh, i think i think a phone is fine on airplane mode okay far away from you 
but um different people i like those um have you seen those wake up those those lamps that wake you up gradually i've heard about it. i haven't seen yeah. them those are a pretty cool investment because it's like the sun's waking you up it gradually gets lighter in your room to wake you up and so it's a more gentler form of waking you up and you know that's signaling that's kind of helping you ease into the day kind of helping you wake up in a in a more graceful state because light is very important you know our bodies are pretty much governed by light when the light is outside the sun is out right now that's a signal to our body that it's time to be awake when we go outside the sun is giving us energy you know unfortunately now at nighttime we can simulate daytime mm -hmm. which throws off our circadian rhythms throws off our biology and so that's why we have a lot of issues at night and so generally the reason why you know to cut all that out the reason why i'd say sometimes you might want to get rid of the phone is because it's sometimes too much of a distraction for people like you might want to check text messages or, or scroll the internet so i just don't want it to be a distraction for connecting with your wife or focusing on doing your night routine and going to sleep at night exactly exactly now you mentioned like okay you you you, sh you make sure that there's no light coming in and mm -hmm. then you get the lamp which is awesome but that's where the issue comes in it's like okay i, I wake up at four my wife wakes up at six i don't think she'd be really happy if, if that mm -hmm. light comes out comes out yeah um but besides that what i was wondering because as i told you i sleep like a baby Mm -hmm. However, does that still mean that because we have the blinds open like halfway and, and we ride out on the street, so there's lights, of course, coming from there. Does that still affect what you mentioned, the quality of sleep? Yeah, because um, your so your body has your body, you know, your skin has all these little photoreceptors. Mm -hmm. And so the light, even then, like artificial light. So this is not like not not like natural light like moonlight or like the lights from candles or something that's a that light doesn't affect your um your body okay it's it's the artificial lighting like street lamps and etc and things like that so those little things do can kind of um affect the quality of your sleep now it's not by a huge margin i'm not saying like it's going to cause you to have insomnia or anything <laughs> but yeah, but you know it. You know our body does have all these like photoreceptors on it, and then um, that light signals that, and it hits something called like melanopsin, you know, which is a which is used in the daytime, and so we want melatonin at night, not not melanopsin. So it's um so yeah, so it's those little factors, but um definitely don't like freak out if if you're like oh I got this little speck of light in. It's just that those are the things to gradually work on over time you know that's like a stage five of it you know of the of the situation is to worry about every little speck of light no no of course um however within the 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 road that i'm walking right now i keep continuously trying to improve little things <laughs> and yeah. sometimes it's the little things that have huge results um, Yeah. so it's definitely that's why i keep asking um and and it's so nice to be able to <laughs> to be able yeah. to pick your brain on there, just to see. Okay, that's that's something I'm going to try. You know. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, one more thing is um I forgot. This is a big one. Is to uh, make sure your room is like cool, and not like hot. Like I'm really surprised. Um, I actually grew up. My family likes to sleep in really hot conditions. I don't understand that. Okay. And so it's like yeah. So um, make sure you sleep in cooler cooler rooms. Because your body nat your body naturally wants to your body naturally um, goes to, your body temperature naturally goes down at night, uh -huh. and so you want to keep all the conditions around that aligned with your natural biology. And then as the day and then as we wake up throughout the day, the morning and into the afternoon, our body temperature is obviously higher. Mm -hmm. Great, that's that's a, that's a great tip. Yeah, I actually heard it's I believe they said twenty two degrees Celsius. I don't know what that is in fire and I, but yeah. So let's, oh man, I was really good at Celsius and then I, I've slacked off now. So it's 67 degrees Fahrenheit, which is that like 16, 17 degrees Celsius? Oh, really? Maybe. That's even colder. Okay. I think maybe 17 times two. I can't remember right. off the top of my head. You know what we do? We'll, we'll, you yeah. let me know later how much that is and then we'll write that down as well <laughs> just to make sure that everybody knows that. 
But how would you go about creating that? Because you, you I don't think you want to do the a put the AC on to to get that kind of temperature, right? Um, no, you can sleep with the AC at night if yeah, if you okay. if you want. If that's if that's what's going to cool the house, you, then you can keep that on at night. I hear. No, just to make sure also that you don't get a cold. It's the last thing you want. Well, luckily, you know, the good thing about when I was over in Portugal is that, you know, a lot of places in America, we have central AC. And so mm. over there, there, there wasn't central AC. And so it was super cold at night. And it took some getting used to because I'm like, man, it's really cold. Like stepping on the floor and everything. I'm like, wow, it's really cold over here. Like you guys don't have like a, you know, AC or, or heating unit. It's like, wow. But my sleep was fantastic once I got in bed. It was fantastic because that, those cooler temperatures around the room coincided with with my with what my body wanted to do. So my sleep is really good. Exactly, exactly. Great. Well, thanks again for sharing that advice. Um, it's been a really insightful interview. Um, I hope everybody enjoyed this. Just in case, if uh, people are like me and keep coming up with new questions. <laughs> How can how can they get a hold of you? How can they get in touch with you? To, to bring yeah, so you, yeah, so you can go to my home base, which is theartoffitnessandlife.com, and you'll see all types of information there. Nice. Thanks for that. We'll definitely be sharing all the links um, within the uh, within the, well, underneath the video, um, as well as the link to uh, to to hook up with you if they want for the. Uh, the free strategy session. Um, again, thank you so much for, for taking the time to, uh, to answer all of my questions. And um, yeah, let's keep in touch and to everybody. Um, I hope to uh, hear and see you all very soon. Thanks for having me on again. And um, like I said, if any questions come up after listening to this or anything, just please feel free to reach out. I, I love helping people. It actually energizes me. So definitely reach out. Awesome. All right, take care.